All right, good evening, everyone. It is 6.06, .06, and I'd like to call the October 23rd uh, regular meeting of the Board of Education to order. Um, let the record show that all board members are present except Casey Cook, and we'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, board, you have before you an agenda. Can I get a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Those in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion is seconded and carried. Um, first item is recognitions. We have terrific tigers. Did you have anything else that you wanted to? <gasps> Who's going to read? Because Casey's not here. Thank you. Jerry. You guys looking at me? Jerry. <laughs> Jerry. Jerry. I'm, read. <laughs> I'm reading. All right, I'll let you guys get up there. I've been looking forward to this all week. <laughs> <laughs> all right, good evening, everybody. We're going to start with Alma Schroeder Elementary. Um, and as I read uh, and recognize the student, parents, uh, if you're in the room, we invite you to stand and recognize you as well. First up is Miss Lila Jackson, third grade daughter of Sarah and Jeremy Jackson. Lila, yeah, let's start. Lila is an absolute joy to have in class. She is a leader and always willing to jump in and help anyone around her. I can, I can al always, it's probably supposed to be Lila again. Lila always follows instructions and sets an example for others. She is a hard worker, a terrific friend, and an exceptional student. Those are just the few reasons why she has been chosen as Alma Schroeder's terrific tiger. Up next, from Blanchard Elementary, we have Caroline Poole, third grade daughter of Tiffany and Jason Poole. <laughs> Caroline Poole is someone who possesses all of the unique traits of a terrific tiger. Her kindness and empathy shines through in her daily interactions, making her a wonderful friend to everyone. She is attentive in class, follows instructions immediately, takes pride in her work, and strives to do her best. She's a shining star in our school and a role model for her classmates. Congratulations on such an amazing honor, Caroline. You deserve it. From Clifford Elementary, we have Luke Stone, fourth grade son of Angela and Andrew Stone. Luke Stone sets a great example for students at Clifford. Luke is always eager to learn and loves to participate in class. He loves to help others and his school. Luke is always safe, respectful, and responsible. Congratulations, Luke, and keep up the great work. From Franklin Elementary, we have Cecilia Musgrave, first grade daughter of Lydia Walbaum and Kevin Musgrave. I'll give her a hand. Stick. We'll catch Cecilia next month. From Jefferson Elementary, we have, uh, you have to help me with this one. Del Reese. Del Reese. Oh, that's super pretty. Del Reese Barnhill, third grade son of Elizabeth Hinkle and Del Reese Barnhill Sr. <laughs> Del Reese always exhibits terrific tiger behavior. He is kind, considerate, helpful, funny, sweet, and respectful. Del Reese goes above and beyond to help other students, his teachers, and anyone in need. He can be counted on when there's a task that needs to be completed, and he will always do it with a smile on his face. Del Reese is a joy to have in class, and he is so deserving of this award. Jefferson is proud to call Del Reese the October Terrific Tiger. From Central Middle School, we have Max... Maldon, Maldonado, sixth grade son of Zelton and Ivan Maldonado. <laughs> Ma 
Max is such a great role model to his peers at CMS. He is always following expectations and sets a great example each day. Max puts in his best effort into all his work and he never gives up. Max shows a great amount of perseverance, respect, integrity, discipline, and empathy. He is the type of student that anyone can get along with, making him a great friend in the classroom. Congratulations, Max. Keep up the great work. From Terry W. Kitchen Junior High, we have Josie Seaball, seventh grade son of Tracy and Stan Seaball. Josie Seaball is nominated for the Terrific Tiger Award because he has already shown great leadership skills. He is not afraid to remind his classmates, including his own friends, when to be quiet, respectful, and to pay attention. He continues to look at, gla at the glass half full instead of half empty. He provides an admirable example of, a well -mannered, of what a well-mannered student is. Congratulations, Josie, and keep up the great work. From Central High School, we have Lydia Chow, 12th grade daughter of Chen Wu and Zhang Hu Kao. <laughs> Lydia Chow is one of the best candidates for the Terrific Tiger Award. She is a self-motivated, dedicated student who also leads in organizations like Beta Club and Student Senate. She is always respectful and polite and exhibits a positive attitude daily. We are so proud she is a CHS student Congratulations, Lydia, and keep up the great work. From Central Academy, we have Terriana Holly, 10th grade daughter of Mary Smith. We'll see if we can catch Terriana next month. All right, I think that's it. It's okay if you leave. It's all right. <laughs> you are very, very welcome to stay, but. on the agenda is information proposals or comments from the audience no, we do not have anyone um, I just want to read something kind of quickly there is some information about how to um, uh, on the agenda if you go to the website Cape website and if you just search school board then there's it shows meetings at the top there there are our policies about how to um, get on the agenda or how to address the board but um, request to place an item on the agenda or address the board should be submitted in writing at least five days in advance of the regular monthly board meeting. And you would submit these requests to the board secretary, Mr. Mr. Payne, at the uh, central administration, administration office. 
So um, I do encourage you to take a look at those policies um, so that you're familiar with them. It, it, I know it's kind of confusing and that's one of the things that we've been trying to be, um, make sure that people are aware of and, and clearer about. So, okay, um, next up is informational reports. And um, the first item is the board president's report. So um, I just want to talk about real quickly, um, we had our first community engagement event at the CTC on October 5th. We had a tour of their very, very impressive facilities. We learned a lot about what CTC has to offer to um, our students and also um, members of the community. Um, after the tour, attendees were provided some information about just about CTC in general. Um, beyond the tour and then we also um, learned about some changes with FAFSA and if you have uh, children who are <coughs> going to be co going to college that is stuff you need to figure out and it is not easy to fill out I'm gonna tell you that um, and then there was some time for Q&A if uh, I will just throw this in there too if um, you do have students who will who are looking at going to college uh, reach out to the counselors they will help you they have like a FAFSA event um, FAFSA, frenzy. At, what, FAFSA frenzy. frenzy yeah to, to kind of give people information about um, how the process works what some of the changes are so um, pay attention to that that's that's an important thing one of the changes just so we can put that out there is is that the submittal for FAFSA has changed to December so you have a little bit more time to actually fill out that paperwork so if you are planning to send one of your kiddos to college or to any any financial aid you need uh, I would be speaking with your uh, counselor as soon as possible whether you're in our district or any other district um, and then I want you to put this on your calendars our next community engagement event is January 18th I know it's a few months off but with the holidays coming up it's going to be here before we knew it before we know it January 18th 16 6 p.m. at Jefferson Elementary okay next we have the superintendent's report well we had a uh, an ex we've had a pretty exciting uh, week last week I'm going to talk to you a little bit about last week's uh, events. Uh, I wanted to just take a moment to thank all of our families for partici participating, if I can speak correctly, in parent-teacher conferences last week. I was in and out of the buildings and we had a lot of participation. Uh, it seems like now that we're kind of getting out of that COVID phase and people are wanting to be back in the buildings and, and uh, meeting the teachers, we had a, a, a higher number of uh, participation. The relationships between a parent and teacher is such an important piece of student success. I enjoyed getting out in the buildings and seeing so many parents actively involved in their child's educational journey. Um, we wrapped up last week with some great professional development sessions across the district. You may have seen a sample from some of those sessions on social media. Some you might say are entertaining. For example, Alma Schroeder's teachers had PD sessions focused on STEM. Mrs. Gentry played the school song on bananas using circuits. Pretty impressive. There's a video on Facebook, and I re recommend you all take, taking a look at it. Cape Central High School enjoyed sessions like Lessons in Resilience. Uh, CHS biology teacher Crystal Versman shared a session on focus. Nick Cato, our secondary curriculum coordinated, coordinator, presented on universal tools to help educators on our district, in our district. The Central High School counselors dove into the ICAP, which is planning uh, for the future for our kids and what courses they need to take and, and actually helping them with their pathways through high school. And then uh, that's, that's the individual career and academic plan the ICAP is. Our professional development days are essential for our growth. We're, we're so proud to see how much our buildings poured into their own learning sessions uh, last week. We have three athletic teams heading into district actions this week. Our football team plays host to Melville this Friday at 7 p.m. We hope that you can uh, be there. Really excited about that. Cross Country heads to Northwest for District Race this Saturday and soccer is at Hillsboro in District Play versus North County also on Saturday. Uh, just good luck to those Tigers. We're proud of all the hard work they put in for these fall sports. The last thing I have to encourage everyone to attend the high school performance of Snow White at Kinder Hall. 
Wednesday through Saturday, they've been practicing and are, and are ready to perform for all of you, if you can make that. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Next, we have the Academic Services Report, which is Mr. Bryce Beck is going to talk about you, you hear us talk about the JAG program a lot. It stands for Jobs for American Graduates. So that's what we mean when we say JAG. Well, thank you. I'm actually just going to pass the torch. Um, I'd like to invite Mr. Zach Payne, principal of Central Academy, to join us to talk about his program. Um, a little bit of an overview, a little bit of a history of the program while he's been principal of Central Academy. And then I will let him uh, introduce our new director of the JAG program. Thank you guys for having me here tonight with you. Um, so I'm very excited about our JAG program at the Academy. We have noticed some major growth in our students and our staff since we've implemented this. Um, this is our fourth year with JAG. Um, I would say the biggest piece of that is just building confidence in students. So we're very, very excited about that piece of it. Um, our community involvement is second to none with this. We've had people come in numerous times this school year so far just to speak to our students and let them see another walk of life that they probably didn't have the idea about before this time. Um, we are very happy to have our new JAG specialist with us, Ms. Ursula Wadley, would you come up here with me? Um, Ms. Wadley, we, I will definitely say we stole her from a close school district, and I'm very happy I can say that. Um, she has done a phenomenal job stepping in with this. This is her first time being a JAG coordinator for anyone. And she has truly done amazing, just building relationships with our students, finding out things that they are excited about and interested in, and finding ways to motivate your students, for sure. Um, she is a, definitely a, a treasure for us at school, and we could be more proud to have her join us here at Academy. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I'm going to Thank you. It makes me look short, right? <laughs> I'm going to make sure I have one for you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any? Yeah. Okay. Um, I have a lot to say about JAG. I made lists and lists and lists of all of the amazing things that go on with JAG. Um, all I can say is, wow, I love my job. I'm so grateful to be here and to get, the, get to know these students. And really, that's the heart of the matter, is getting to know these kids, what they're all about. JAG is a program that um, looks at those barriers in their lives, those challenges, and these kids have a lot. Some days they come in with a whole lot of stuff, and um, we find ways to overcome that. We, we find better ways to live life, and we look at things that they're passionate about. And um, the difference is with JAG, we explicitly teach some of those skills that they would not otherwise ever know how to do. So if you um, tell a high school kid to go get a job, they might not know how to do that. Um, you just tell a kid, why don't you just go to college? They might not know how to do that. So we go through the steps of all kinds of different things and teach them those skills. Um, with that, we, can, we connect with the community. Employer engagement is a huge piece to the JAG program and making it successful. Mr. Ritter's accommodated us a couple times already, but we've just had great support from the community. And I'm always looking for more, so if you have ideas, please let me know. <laughs> um, we model those life skills as well. We talk about um, some of those soft skills or social skills that uh, sometimes the students need to learn to not only attain a job, but to keep a job and to work with other people and uh, conflict resolution and positive, uh, positive, positive relationships. So. Um, really, I'm just so proud and I'm so thankful and I want to thank you all for supporting this great program. It really is every day I see these amazing students and they're doing great things. Um, with that, um, our student Taylor Banks is here tonight. She won the essay contest for our group, for our academy here, and she will be attending a uh, banquet in Jefferson City with First Lady Parsons. Um, where they will all be honored. There will be a couple chosen to move up and, and um, in rank and maybe uh, qualify for the, the state um, convention. I've asked her to come tonight and read part of her essay, if you, don't, if you all will mind just hearing her part. <clears throat> the other really big thing that I really am trying to push with these students is, are those leadership skills. 
So anytime I can get them to get up and do those things instead of me, I'm trying to do that. Not to get out of the job, but to motivate them <laughs> to, to um, be leaders in the community. So Taylor, you will come up. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Ashley. I'm Ashley. I'm um, Taylor. I'm a junior at the academy. I want to read my speech. The name of my speech is called Unleash My Potential Through Jack. I'm a 72 year old junior attending the academy, Cave Drive, Missouri. I have been attending the academy since November of my freshman year. This is the third year for Jack, Jazz America's graduates in our school. Since I found out about Jack, I have been looking forward to being a part of it. I am very thankful to be included in the Jack program this year. It feels like Section 9. Now that I'm a part of the Jack team, I feel like my potential can be unleashed. I have always tried to make the best out of situations, even if I was not happy with them. Overall, growing up, I thought I had the best childhood. I love being around my loved ones, they mean the world to me, especially my mother. Unfortunately, as I started getting older, I was beginning to become more distant and shutting everyone out. I started acting out in order to get my mother's attention. However, my, ultimate, my behavior ultimately resulted in my placement into foster care. I was 11 and devastated living home was very traumatic. It was over a year before I came back home. While I was in foster care, I was located in nine different homes and facilities. I felt low spirit and physical and unwanted. Then with these emotions took a major effect on my life. I started failing classes, became more irritable, and was diagnosed with depression. The J vision states, imagine living in a nation where every young person is prepared for future success, equipped with skills and support to succeed in education and employment in life. Jack helps people overcome barriers while teaching them to use the barriers as dedication to fulfill their goals, realize their potential, and make their journey a reality. I believe participating in Jack will help me become a better person. I also know that Jack will learn. And I also know that with Jack, I will learn more about life, meet new people, and develop new skills that will need after I graduate. I have so big new dreams I'd like to accomplish after high school, and I believe my time with Jack will help me do so. My first dream was to attend cosmetology school. My next dream was to enroll at North Carolina a and State University to pursue a business degree. Another big dream of mine is to attain law school to become a lawyer. Instead of weighing me down, the barriers of my life have made me more determined to achieve my goals and dreams. I realize, that, I realize that I'm a passionate and dedicated young adult. I look forward to being a part of Jack because it will help me present me with new learning experiences and life blessings. Jack is a wonderful program with lots of blessings and it's, even, and it's an even bigger blessing to be a part of it. My quote for life is, when, when a storm comes in life, turn it into a rainbow. Jack is my rainbow. Through this program, I will learn how to reach my full potential and I will gain the confidence I need to take on a new opportunity I make it. There's nothing else I can say. <laughs> Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. And I have, if I, I would love to, any way we can connect with the community, please let me know. Can we get a picture, Ms. Stanley? Can you get a picture of all three of them together, if you don't care, sure. Mr. Payne? <laughs> Mr. Payne can stand on the stool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're not tall enough, Mr. Payne. <laughs> he <laughs> wouldn't even show up. <laughs> <laughs> he literally wouldn't. Have him just sit down. They're standing next to a giant. Move the stool for him to sit on. That's right. You can sit on the stool. <laughs> Just you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story. That's an awesome story. Yeah. Ursula is taking. When she said jazz is my rainbow, that guy. Five kids mm -hmm. to that lead to the lead and live yeah. to lead. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. She's taking five of her kids there. Like, I don't know if they need the slogan, but the there was. <laughs> okay, next on the agenda, thank you so much, that was amazing. I hate moving on now. 
But um, next on the agenda is the Community Teacher Association report. Come on up. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. I am, my name is Shannon Bergoff. I'm actually the vice president of CTA. Unfortunately, Mr. Loppy is not well today, so we're hoping for good recovery and quick recovery for him as well. Uh, so you get to hear the staff shout outs for me today. And I heard he reads them really fast, so I'll try my best. <laughs> um, in Alba Strada, there's a shout out to our amazing reading specialist, Andrea Schwitt. Elizabeth Miller and Bonnie Legrand for na navigating the new RSPs and bringing a great calmness and understanding to the process for our staff. Huge shout out to Ms. Nikki Schaefer and all her hard work in creating our new incredible teacher workroom. It is warm, inviting, and a great place to relax. Shout out to Ms. Price and everything she is doing to get our new STEAM lab up and running. Shout out to all our amazing TAs. We could not function daily without them. Sabrina Reitenauer, Amanda Goon, Connor Murphy, Blake and Moore, Melody Miller, Sarah Deal, Sarah McCubbin, and Tori Hemley are rock stars. From Blanchard to our reading teachers for all of their hard work on these new reading success plans and the new testing, they've been very flexible, worked very hard to make sure it would all work out smoothly. Ms. Club for always being up for new challenges and working so hard to get the new school to get the school news team together. Ms. Hagman and her husband for taking over the fish tank, and I know personally that is a task in itself. <laughs> and our custodians who rock, and also Coach Schmidt for taking on filling bird feeders with students. We didn't put the students in the bird feeders, they're doing it together. So we can take ownership and part of the school. From Central Academy, shout out to Ms. Wadley for planning our, and an outstanding ceremony to induct new students into JAG, hey JAG, and to recognize our new JAG officers. To our junior high team, at uh, Central Academy for always helping each other and assisting in any way to make sure students are successful. From Clifford, shout out to our cafeteria staff. They create a fun atmosphere for our students. They decorate for each season and acknowledge the birthdays of our students and staff. They always have a smile and a positive attitude. We love how they take care of us. CTC, shout out to Ms. Estes for keeping our entire student body happy with the DECA store snacks. Snacks are Another shout out to <laughs> Chef Lindsay Yacht for two successful Wednesday buffets. We eat well at the CTC. From the high school, shout out to Nick Cato for coming and helping input data in Galileo during the four day internet outage. Each test had 10 questions that had to be individually entered into Galileo for each student. Shout out to the high school staff who has managed to post term grades and continue to teach when the internet is unpredictable. From Jefferson, we've been short-staffed on custodians for quite a while. We have had a group of teachers, Jennifer Boyd, Bailey Crailman, Anna Sturgeon, Ms. Nakia, and Ms. Mika, Mr. Loppy, stepping up after school to take out trash, vacuum classroom rugs, hallway rugs, and sweep floors, as well as mop. I'm amazed at their attitude and am inspired by all their extra hard work. The entire staff has stepped up by daily by tagging as much as possible to get the job done. Mr. Blessing, our new custodian, oh, what a fun name, has been working tirelessly to keep our school clean. We are thankful for his continued effort. Ms. Reese has been amazing this year. She's gone out of her way to ensure our team understands the new RSPs. She is a wealth of knowledge and is always willing to help her team however she can. Ms. Lauren is an amazing and compassionate TA. She has been very flexible this school year and keeps a positive attitude through it all. From the junior high, shout out to Michael Harr. Michael is a great resource relationship builder with students and colleagues. He goes above and beyond to provide students with the tools they need to succeed at school and outside of the school walls. Michael is also very easy to work with. He is always open to all ideas and ready to implement them and acquire student achievement. Mr. Harper <coughs> is a, sorry, a valuable asset in our school district. Shout out to Alex Solitz, Sultan Oh my goodness, <laughs> Sultan Nipana. Alex has been a huge morale booster for both our staff and students. He is always popping into staff classrooms to visit, find interesting ways of relating to our students, such as sharing sports stats with students, and always having a new scheme up his sleeve that brings a ton of laughter to our hall. He is a hard worker. You would never know that he was a first year teacher. He is absolutely amazing. I'm glad that he is a part of our team. Shout out to the CJHS administrative team and leadership team for a successful implementation of our new morning routines and before school ICU. Students are safer entering our building. They have an opportunity to complete missing assignments right away and the hallways are much calmer and happier. Shout out to Ms. Mills for, for supporting new teachers and always being willing to provide guidance. She will always take time to answer questions and give a kind word of encouragement. Shout out to all of our TAs. We wouldn't be able to do what we do without you. 
You are appreciated and valued so much. Shout to Lauren Shu. She has brought new life to our library and created a safe space for many students. She strives every day to make the library a place for students where they want to be and is always looking for ways to support staff. She's been an amazing addition to our building and we are so lucky to have her last one. From the middle school, I wanted just to give a shout out to Ms. Wright for all her hard work here at CMS. Coach Payne is doing great connecting our students and helping Ms. Wright get them on track and to Ms. Banks for being her amazing self and sharing new ideas to use here at CMS. I also wanted to give a special shout out to Ms. Heck to let her know that her de dedication to her students and helping them succeed is not going unnoticed. I'm so thankful for our team coming together here at CMS. <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you so much. God, I'm like, I'm worn out. <laughs> Tyler's definitely going to step up his game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, next we have the Treasurer Finance Report with Ms. Dudek. Okay. Um, the report that I'm going to be presenting on is the September 2023 Fund Balance Report. I am starting with just the general fund. Uh, the beginning fund balance as of September 1st was $16.5 million. We received $1.3 million in revenues expenses of 1.9 and we did a fund transfer of 1.6 million to the special revenue fund to cover expenses over there leaving us with an ending fund balance of 14.3 million um, the cash and investment detail is listed and um, just want to point out something else that happens in September under the debt service fund you'll notice the expenses are a little over a million um, <coughs> September is when we make our interest payments on our bonds so that number is a bit larger than what you typically would see. Does anyone have any questions? Okay. Thank you. Okay, next we have board reports. Uh, Casey's our MSBA delegate, right? So he's not here. Is, do you have a legislative report? We're going to uh, conference. Yeah, we'll know more. Yeah, exactly. We are going to a conference next next yeah. next week. Yes. Me. I have another conference before that. I'm exhausted. Um, and K Public School Foundation also does not have a report, but there is a reminder that the Penguin Party is Saturday, February 10th at the Drury Convention Center. Um, the band is Dr. Chevegas. And there, I've seen them a few times. They're a fun band, so you all should come. Uh, next, we have non-action items. This is the first reading of board policies A, C, B, 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 A, B, B, F, E, F, G, B, A. I'm going to go ahead and read the names of those because that sounds ridiculous. But <laughs> policy A, C, prohibition against illegal discrimination, harassment, and retaliation. Um, policy B, B, A, board member qualifications. B, B, F, school board member ethics. EF, food service management, and GBA, exempt and non-exempt employees, and that's it, right? That's it. Um, so this is our first reading as, as board members. Just go through these. We'll be voting on them um, in following meetings. Okay, next uh, we have approval of consent agenda items. That includes agendas and the agenda or minutes from the September meetings and payment of bills. So, um, can mm -hmm. I? <laughs> Sorry. So I asked for a motion, and we've already got uh, <laughs> so moved and second. Is there any discussion on this on mm -hmm. these? All right. Those in favor of um, approving the consent agenda items? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> All right, next we have business. And um, this is, hold on, I'm waiting for it to come up. Um, a, Approval for uh, bid for renovation of a building at 1301 Main Street. 
So um, the motion would be to authorize the superintendent or his designee to negotiate a contract on behalf of the board with sides construction company for construction renovation of the new Central Academy building at a cost not to exceed 2.7 million. So moved. Second. Hi. So, Mr. Crowell is not here. He's actually at a safety and security training. Uh, so he wanted me to present uh, the bid tabulation. I believe if you go underneath bids for renovations, and should be an attachment. If you'll look, sorry, your mic. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, we had actually two bids. We had one through Kiefner brothers and then another one through sides construction the Kiefner brothers was 2.8 and the sides construction was 2.4 million we went with sides construction which is 2.4 million uh, one of the things that uh, Mr. Kroll Crow wanted me to note is is that although the numbers initially came in a little bit higher than what was expected through a value engineering process with the firm we were able to identify $114,000 in additional savings as well. By accepting this contract, the district will be able to complete the renovations on site. Uh, just a reminder that we are doing a lot of those uh, renovations uh, through our in-house work that we're doing, so just realize we're saving several dollars with that. Uh, savings on overall projects, including electrical, painting, roofing, servers and low voltage services and safety and security components we're saving money on those things those portions of the projects are already captured within our annual uh, operating budget so um, i am asking for you to approve the uh, bids the bid for sides any questions what did we originally think? I know this came in over what we had originally thought. Do you remember what that was? It was around $2, two million, a little over. I think it might have been like 2.2. 2. Was it, What was it? Lindsay, do you know offhand? Do you remember? What the estimate was? Yes, what the estimate was. So one of the things that he wanted just, to, that's a good question. One of the things that he reminded us is that we also saved dollars at the uh, athletic facility so those dollars that we've saved there it's like three hundred thousand dollars are going to be moved over to this facility so it's really not going to really if you look at our overall fund for balance it's not going to change at all. Um, and this is taking a little longer than we thought it would too right yes but some of the equipment is in delayed and i remember him saying that yeah. but, so sorry we, we fully expect to start next school Almost. year in this building correct that is correct okay Right now, today. Well, you know, <laughs> things change. I as understand. long as all the materials come in <laughs> on time, yes, that is correct. Barring no major, right? <laughs> Barring no major uh, mishaps with uh, delivery. Or even just of one really material. critical minor one. <laughs> oh, I hope not. <laughs> so there were five bid packets that went out, but we only received bids from two. Is just there any indication why the other three did not submit a bid? No, I don't. That's a good question. So the question that uh, Mr. McDonald asked that was actually five contractors. We just didn't receive bids on three of those, just two of those uh, bid out that contract. I'm not mm -hmm. sure why. It's not no. Uh, I do was the scope of the scope project. Of a lot of times it will be. <clears throat> Any other questions? And Lindsay, do we have this budgeted out already for this current fiscal year yes. or? Yes. So it's in the budget. We started with 2.2 .2 million um, in the budget. And so we're using savings from another project. And then I had some additional funds set aside if we needed to use them. Okay. Thank you. Good. Uh, those in favor of approving the bid for renovation? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, motion seconded and carried. Next up is information and proposals from board members. Does anyone have anything? Okay, seeing none. Uh, next up is adjournment. So moved. Second. <laughs> so. 
We got a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Those in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned at 645. Thank you.